Guess where I found one of the most beautiful views in Europe? On a river cruise in Prague in the Czech Republic. This is great. Welcome to Laura McKenzie's Traveler. Nice view, huh? Hi, I'm Laura McKenzie, and welcome to Prague in the Czech Republic, one of the most beautiful cities I've seen in Europe. You know, some of it looks the same as it did 100 years ago. In fact, they call it the city of 100 spires. Fortunately for visitors, Prague has changed dramatically since the 89 revolution, and capitalism is going strong. They have great shopping. I'm really excited about being here, so if you're ready, let's see Prague. Located in the heart of Bohemia, in the center of Europe, Prague has been called many things over the years, the Golden City and the Paris of the 30s. The city and its people take these compliments in stride as Prague's mixture of beauty, atmosphere and history speaks for itself. It's the atmosphere here that makes it so difficult to describe, and it's what has made Prague a favorite location for many feature films, as well as a vacation mecca for tourists looking for something a little different. Perhaps one of the world's best preserved cities, the best way to soak up Prague is to wander around its intricately designed cobblestone streets. Hi. Looking at these cobblestone streets, they're laid out in such a pretty pattern. Well, it's not because the pattern was nice, it's so the bricklayer would have to expend the least amount of work laying the bricks. Isn't that neat? Trivia. Prague's mismatched collection of Romanesque, Gothic, Art Nouveau, and Baroque buildings are fascinating, and a leisurely tour of its landmarks is like walking through a living museum. The old joke, if it ain't Baroque, don't fix it, doesn't apply here, as culture, commerce, and cuisine has exploded in Prague since the fall of communism after the Velvet Revolution in 1989. Taking a few steps back in time, let's visit the two symbols of Prague, Prague Castle and the Charles Bridge. Some say that eggs were mixed in with a mortar to give the bridge strength. Others say it was due to the timing of the construction of the bridge, which was scheduled by consulting leading astrologers of the day. Whatever the reason for its astonishing longevity, it's definitely a must-see in Prague. This has been a pedestrian bridge for the entire 600 years it's been here, except for a few horses and trolleys that used to go across. They tell you in the guidebooks to come early in the morning because it's empty and it's beautiful and you can get some really pretty pictures. But you know what? I like it in the middle of the day when it's busy. A lot of people, you have the vendors. This is when it's fun. One of the oldest buildings in the city central is my favorite, Prague Castle. For a thousand years, Prague Castle has stood watch over the city visually and literally. It dominates Prague's modest skyline and from its perch high above the river has the best known view of the city. Politically, the castle has been integral in determining the fate of Prague and the Czech Republic and still serves as a royal residence and the center of political power today. It's a great place to get a sense of Prague's history and to experience some of that pomp and circumstance that I love so much. The changing of the guard happens every two hours on the odd hour, but it only lasts about a minute, so if you're late, you're gonna miss it. But you know what? You can take your picture with them. Can't say cheese. They don't smile. These guys guard the castle 24 hours a day. Are you allowed to talk? If the answer is no, blink your right eye. What do you do if you get an itch? I saw you smile earlier. He's really good. Is that gun loaded? It's very shiny. This is one of my best interviews. There's a lot to see here in the castle district, so it helps to get a guide to tell you what you're looking at. Lucia, what is this street? It's adorable. 
Well, this is called the Golden Lane there. Well, it's not really golden there because re here live originally very poor people at the beginning, bow and arrow army of the Prague Castle because this is part of the fortification of the castle. But then the legend says there lived also alchemists and they were trying to make the gold from other different stones. That's why we call it Golden Lane there. Look at this little one. There's a little kitchen also. Okay, I'm 5'8", so that's as tall as the house, as the door lives. It's tiny, tiny, tiny. Oh, that must have been the kitchen. There's a little fire, like a fireplace thing. You have to see this tiny little stairway, look. Can you see that? The people were poor. In that time, they had no money to make it more modern. So it remained exactly the same as in that time in the 16th century. It's really nice. Another area of town dedicated to preserving the past is the Jewish Quarter. In the 1700s, there was a wall around the Jewish Quarter, and it wasn't until 1848 that the ban was lifted requiring Jews to live inside these walls. Well, the walls are gone now. They were torn down to make room for new buildings in the 19th century, but this is still one of the most visited places in Prague. The Jewish Museum manages all of the Jewish landmarks in Prague, including the Old Jewish Cemetery, where 100,000 Jews are buried 12 layers deep. The Ceremonial Hall, originally used for burials, now contains an exhibit relating to Jewish customs and traditions. The Old New Synagogue is the oldest surviving synagogue in Europe and was built in the 13th century. It's not part of the Jewish Museum and can be toured separately. Right next to the oldest synagogue in Prague is a new statue of one of Prague's most famous citizens, Franz Kafka, the creative writer who wrote about absurdity in life. Well, during the day, Kafka was a very boring, uncreative worker in an insurance company, and at night he did all of his creative writing. So this statue shows his creative self being weighted down by his boring, uncreative self. It's absurd, it's Kafka. On the edge of the Jewish Quarter is the Old Town Hall and the infamous astronomical clock. Built in 1410 and remodeled in 1490 by Master Hannes, the clock has a dubious history. Legend has it that after Master Hannes completed his work on the clock, the municipal council had him blinded so he couldn't repeat his work elsewhere. For revenge, Master Hannes climbed into the clockworks where he promptly died and caused the clock to malfunction for 80 years. This is a big attraction here in Prague. At the top of the hour, everybody's here waiting for the clock to do its thing. So I'm standing here waiting, trying to figure out what time it is, and I'm just not getting it. And then I find out that it's an astronomical clock. You don't tell the time. It tells the phases of the moon, the days of the year, the seasons, the equinox, and the Christian holidays. So, when's Christmas? Here's a tip. Although the Czech Republic is in the EU, the Czech crown is the best way to do cash transactions as the euro is not widely accepted yet. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on Prague, go to lauramackenzietv.com. One of the most unique features in Prague is their old tram system, which still operates today. You know, it looks like a museum in here, doesn't it? But these antique trams from the turn of the century actually work. In fact, taking a ride on one of these is just one more reminder that Prague was once quite the place to live. The trams are a great way to see the city, especially if you don't have a lot of time. All aboard. The trams are cheap and run on time, but more importantly, they're also a lot of fun. Is this atmosphere or what? have so much fun on the tram, you might not want to get off. There's so much to see here in Prague, and it's all right there, just waiting for you to discover it. Make sure you bring good shoes, because once you get off the tram, you're going to be doing a lot of walking. <sighs> 248 stairs. 
No, I'm just kidding. I didn't really climb them. I was acting because here in Prague, they shoot a lot of motion pictures and I thought I might get discovered. You know, there have been so many films shot in Prague that I heard somebody refer to it as Hollywood East. In fact, I would bet you that half the people that live here probably work as extras in the film. Let's see. Excuse me, do you live here? Yes, I do. Are you by any chance an actor? Yes, I am. I knew it. <laughs> no, I was acting. This is Hansa. He's my guide, and he knows all the film locations around here because he is an actor. So what what movies have been shot here in the Old Town Square? Well, if you really look carefully, you will find yourself in the middle of the Mission Impossible one. Oh, I love that one. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was a very was nice film. And what other movies have been shot around here? Well, right around the corner, in 1982, there was the Amadeus by Miloš Forman shot. Amadeus, yeah. Amadeus, right. that's right, that's correct. Right. And a little further down, other French and Hollywood historical films. I will show you. Oh, Would that'd you like be great. It? Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Prague is also famous for art. Artists have been creating here for centuries. I mean, it's a city that just inspires creativity. You can find exhibitions in the museums, or you can find them out on the street. Some are classical and some are whimsical. And trust me, all the art is in the eye of the beholder. Speaking of art, let's head to the market and see what local creations are on sale today. You never know when you're gonna stumble across a masterpiece. Look at these hand-painted and hand-embroidered eggs for your Christmas tree, your Halloween tree, or your Easter tree. I love these. Also, check out the puppets, marionettes. That's what you find in Prague. So, whether you're trawling for trinkets, treasures, or treats, the Prague Flea Market is the place to go for one-stop shopping. This is so much fun. You know, this is probably the only market I've ever seen where you don't bargain. It's also the only one I've seen that takes credit cards. That's so civilized. The real buy in Prague is crystal. The preferred glass of the world's elite, fine bohemian crystal has been produced here since the 14th century. There are lots of little crystal shops featuring beautifully designed and intricately cut jewelry, vases and chandeliers for much less than you'd pay back home. The quality is high and the prices are low and most shops will ship your purchases home for you. What I love about shopping in Europe is that you get the value added tax refunded when you leave the EEC. Now it works in a lot of ways but basically you go into a shop you spend a certain amount and they give you a tax form. You take the tax form and the goods to the airport when you leave the EEC and they stamp it and give you the cash back on the spot. This is great. I mean the more you spend the more you save. Love it. Here's a tip, exchange money in banks or ATM machines as money exchange offices are known to target tourists with high commissions. Laura McKenzie's Traveler, we'll be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on Prague, go to lauramackenzietv.com. Okay, you're starting to get the feel of the city. So where can you stay in the heart of Prague that will match all of the experiences you've had so far? Well, I discovered a trio of five-star hotels in Prague, operated by Vienna International Hotels and Resorts that fit the bill perfectly. Their slogan is, a statement of quality and service. And judging by the quality of their service, I'd say their slogan is an understatement. The first is the Hotel Palace Praha, an Art Nouveau style hotel built in 1909. All of the rooms are furnished with period furniture. For something just as elegant, but a little bit different, also in the center of Prague, is the second hotel, the Hotel Le Palais. A member of the leading small hotels of the world, Le Palais is one of the most beautiful examples of Belle Epoque architecture in Central Europe. Choose from 60 spacious rooms and 12 elegantly, finely appointed suites, all carefully restored to their 19th century grandeur. The jewel in this triple crown of luxury hotels is the Hotel Savoy. 
Said to be the best address in town when visiting Prague, the Hotel Savoy is a deluxe five-star boutique hotel built in the 19th century in the Art Nouveau style. Located just steps away from Prague Castle, you can't beat its location. All of these hotels also make excellent base camps for day trips to the beautiful countryside surrounding Prague. Getting out of Prague to see some of the castles in the countryside is something you definitely have to do. Now, this is the town of Locket, home to Charles IV. Nice little castle, wouldn't you say? He had quite a few of them around the countryside. So I'd say a couple of days in Prague, one or two days for excursions. Now that's a nice trip. Locket is the Czech word for elbow, and the town and castle were named Locket because the royal fortress was built on a cliff overlooking a bend in the river below. In the Middle Ages, the fortified city of Locket was known as the key to the Kingdom of Bohemia. But today, the town of Locket throws open its gates, welcoming tourists to experience a taste of yesteryear. The Gothic Locket Castle is the main draw and well worth the 90-minute tour. It's said to be the most beautiful and best-preserved castle in the Czech Republic. Castle tours are designed around the history of the castle, and special displays include a large collection of Bohemian china, a museum devoted to the German poet Goethe, and my personal favorite, a dungeon tour. Okay, back to Charles IV. Legend has it that while chasing a stag in the Locket Forest, he stumbled on a healing spring and later founded the town of Karlovy Vary, the oldest of all the Bohemian spa towns. Located just six miles from Locket, Karlovy Vary, or Carlsbad as it's sometimes called, is a great spa town and another great day trip from Prague. This town's been almost totally restored since the fall of communism, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So whether you're here to take the waters by doctor's prescription or you're here just as a tourist, it's something you definitely have to see. You know my favorite part? So much of it is pedestrian only. Foot traffic or horse and carriage, just like the old days. Karlovy Vary has 12 thermal springs, all with a very high mineral content, and all gushing out of the ground at very high pressure at the rate of 660 gallons per minute. These springs have attracted royalty, world leaders, great writers, composers, and the locals for centuries. You can come here for a week for treatment, which basically means a spa doctor will diagnose you for your ailments. He'll prescribe thermal baths and minerals and so many cups of this thermal water to drink a day. Now everybody here walks around with this spa cup, which has a little bitty straw in it. You go over here, you fill your cup at each one of the fountains, and you drink it through this straw. Everybody has these here. Now, you'll see a plaque next to each one of the fountains, and it says what mineral is in this fountain and how hot the water is. And the water is hot between 110 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit. But I should warn you, a mineral cleansing is that. It's a cleansing. You will get nausea and diarrhea if you drink too much of the water. That's the point, so I think I'll pass. And for those of you like me who prefer minerals as jewelry and vases rather than in their drinking water, there's plenty for you to see and buy here in Karlovy Vary, too. And here's a day trip you don't even have to leave Prague for. Well, I've heard the best way to see Prague is from the water, so permission to board. Riverboats like the Elbus provide convenient and affordable cruises up and down the river. Since most cities were originally built up around the rivers, some of the oldest and most interesting buildings are best viewed while cruising by them. Some of the newest structures are best seen from here as well. The metronome up on the hill, what's that significance? Oh yes, our metronome. It stays actually on the place where a huge, maybe the biggest one in Europe of Stalin was. A statue. That's right. And now after the revolution in 1990, we actually put up the metronome and it's supposed to show clicking of the new era. Oh, that's nice. From the river, you get to see all of those interesting architectural details that you miss from the land. And if you think the scenery along the riverbanks is beautiful during the day, wait till you see it at night. 
Here's a tip. Real registered taxis have a permanent yellow taxi lamp on the roof. Unregistered taxis are famous for overcharging unsuspecting tourists. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And for more information on Prague, go to lauramckenzietv.com. The Golden City. City of a hundred spires. Whatever you call it, see for yourself why a visit to Prague makes for such a remarkable and memorable vacation. This is such a pretty city and I'm so glad I got to show it to you because it's the one place in the world I have always wanted to come back to. I hope you enjoyed seeing it with me and that you'll join me again next time from another terrific destination somewhere else around the world. From Prague and the Czech Republic, I'm Laura McKenzie. Bye-bye.